Okay guys, today we're going to be taking a look at a map called Delta Bunsen, put together by Lobster, and it is taking place in an enrichment sphere, which from what I understand about mapping is kind of challenging to map in because it has to appear really open and uh, barely constructed while at the same time being closed enough that the player can't just portal across and skip half the map. Of course, taking place in 1960s Aperture, the voice lines come from none other than Cave Johnson himself. The average human male is about 60% water. As far as we're concerned, that's a little extravagant. So if you feel a bit dehydrated in this next test, that's normal. We're going to hit you with some jet engines and see if we can't get you down to 20 or 30 percent. Funny enough, the map won't actually start until you press the button in the waiting room to kick it off. And yes, this map's testing element is fire. There's no way to get past it by portaling over to the other side because there's no portalable surfaces in this room, but there is a huge drop of water that you have access to and you can use that to temporarily extinguish the flames and move on. None of the flames in this map stay extinguished for very long though, in fact every time that you put them out, the Nixie tubes, and yes I totally looked those up, uh, start counting down from 3 until the time when the flames come up again. It's nice that it's consistent because that exact timing comes up later on in the map. Over here we have one last uh, wall of fire to get past, but as it turns out the water blob does not have enough momentum to get over there, so we're going to have to go into this room and see what we can find out if we can solve the puzzle from here. This room has a very momentum based puzzle, um, it, which is great because I mean that's what the basis of Portal is founded upon is momentum. Uh, use momentum to get up on this ledge, then use momentum to fling yourself up onto the next ledge. Or if you're mean, miss the next ledge entirely and have to do it a second time. But you'll see or at least have heard the bird up there, which is a continuity nod to the same bird that's going to be pecking Gladys later on during the plot. This part's really cool, you have to fling yourself up really close to the ceiling and hit the button at, during part of your fling. Uh, once you do that, you are rewarded with a cube up there on the ledge, so it's just a matter of portaling yourself back up onto the ledge, grabbing the cube, and this little miniature part of the puzzle is solved. As it turns out, solving this part of the puzzle, putting the cube on the button, turns on the other testing element in this map, which is the fan. It impacts both you and other elements. I mean, I'm holding down W here, I can barely make myself go forward at all. But it, it impacts these blobs as well, including these blobs of water. So using the blob of water plus the fan, uh, giving it extra momentum, allows us to put out the fire and skip out of this part of the chamber. I think that this meshes really well with the blob and all those sorts of things in old aperture because uh, being able to impact the trajectory of those blobs introduces a whole bunch of new interesting elements to the test. If you've cut yourself at all in the course of these tests you might have noticed that your blood is pure gasoline. That's normal. We've been shooting you with an invisible laser that's supposed to turn blood into gasoline so all that means is it's working. Okay, now things are going to get a little bit more complicated. The exit of this test chamber happens to be in the ceiling, unlike almost every other test chamber you've probably ever played. It's got a fan on the bottom that we're supposed to be able to take up to the exit, but no way to get the fan going, so we're going to have to take a look in this room and see what we can find. Here we've got a button, so let's press the button. And as it turns out, we can't get that cube. The blue gel is actually being used as a barrier in order to get that cube, so we're going to have to do something else to erase that gel. Coming over here, we have a, uh, looks like a place we can bounce ourselves off of using the blue gel, so it's pretty straightforward. Portal, get the gel, bring the gel over here, get the bouncy gel up on the walls, but it's not quite enough. You'll notice that there's a little bit missing towards the top, but there's a fan here on the bottom, so if we just step on the button and use the fan, it will coat the rest of this little bouncy part of the chamber perfectly. Now it's just a matter of bouncing up. There's that bird again. This part takes place in between the upper and lower chambers. The lower chamber was the chamber that we were just in, which is down below, and the upper chamber we haven't actually been to yet, but that little platform will open up when we get there. This controls which gels are available in which chambers by way of moving the platforms up and down uh, between the two chambers. So by raising the blue gel and lowering the clear gel platform, now we've made clear gel available to the lower chamber, but taken away from the upper chamber, but hell, we're not even there yet. So you'll see no more blue gel, but we can use the clear gel. Using the clear gel, we can clear off the blue gel that's preventing us from getting this cube. So now we can just press the button, the cube drops, and that is it. We have solved this puzzle. It's interesting to see gel as a barrier instead of a testing element that helps you get to the end of it. So, pretty neat, I have to say. 
Once you got the cube on there, all you have to do is ride the fan up to the upper chamber we were talking about before. Great job, astronaut, war hero, and or Olympian. With your help, we're gonna change the world. <laughs> up here in the upper chamber, it looks like we've got two buttons that are in need of pressing and some blue gel that we can use to get up there and press them. As it turns out, though, they need to be pressed at the same time, hence why you see those neon numbers there once again. So, if you press one, the countdown begins, you have to jump over there, press the other one very quickly. Because if you don't, that's what happens. As it turns out, jumping onto the blue gel isn't so much of a good idea, you need to actually let yourself fall onto the blue gel, get over to the other side, and that's the only way you'll be able to get there in time. This opens up the platform we were talking about earlier, which we can use to get back down into the control room and bring the cube that's down there up into this upper area, which gives us both a cube and also returns the clear gel up to the upper chamber so we can use that as well. Now the cube goes on this button right over here, and doing that reveals the exit. Unfortunately, the exit is filled with another wall of fire, so we're going to have to do something to extinguish that. Fortunately, we happen to bring the clear gel back up, so it's just a matter of flinging the clear gel over. The fan picks it up, bounces it, and boom! Fire gone. Except for the fact that, as we noticed earlier, the flames will only be extinguished for about three to four seconds at a time, so we need something to fling ourselves over to the other side, and that is where the Aperture Science 1960s-style aerial faceplate comes into play. A really cool reskin of the original faceplate that acts more or less in the same way. So, if we fling ourselves right behind the clear blob, we'll arrive just as the fire is being extinguished and solve the chamber. Congratulations! The simple fact that you're standing here listening to me means you've made a glorious contribution to science. The mapper must have liked their faith plate reskin quite a bit because there's not one, not two, but three of them flinging us across Delta Bunsen into the exit, which coincidentally gives us a really nice view of the structure of Delta Bunsen overall. It's a really nicely themed 1960 style aperture map. And I really do like the testing element, and I like especially the fans because it meshes so well with the gels. I mean, you've got a flowing liquid, you've got something that can manipulate that flow of liquid. It, it goes together pretty well. Um, unfortunately, I haven't really seen much come of this concept. I believe this map was made back in 2011, and I haven't really seen it used in any map since then. But if there's a mapper out there who likes to map an old 60s, 70s aperture, and you need some other testing element to make the maps a little bit more interesting, definitely check that out. Uh, consider using that. As always, the map link is in the description if you want to play it yourself, and if you want to see a video made of a different map, just leave that in the comments and I will check it out. Thanks very much for watching, guys, as always, and I will catch you next time.